Okay, so yeah, so, so rational exponents are root or exponents that are fractions, not whole numbers, positives and negatives, right? So we talked the root, the root goes on the outside there. Okay, and then the power, the power we call an exponent, right? Sometimes it's called the power, but we call it an exponent too, All right? We did that. This is the stuff we did last semester, right? We knew that stuff. That's not anything new. Now, what we're doing is we're converting it into straight exponent. So what is the top? The top is the root, or sorry, the top is the exponent, the power. The bottom is the root. So when a power has a bottom, it means the root. OK? So for example, let me give you an example here. If I say x to the 1 half power, that's 1 half power is a big power that you're going to see a lot, 1 half. The top is the power, right? So that means I have x to the first power. The bottom is the root. The power. Do we have to write the first power? That If something is to the first power, do we have to write that? No. You can if you want. It's not wrong. But you don't have to. And then the two on the outside, do we have to write that? No, it's just the square root, right? It means square root. So x to the 1 half power just means the square root of x. Let me give you another example. 9 to the 1 half power. What that means is 9 to the first square root. Well, 9 to the first is just 9, right? What is the square root of 9? 3. So 9 to the 1 half is another way of saying just the square root of 9. What is third root, though? So let's change it up here. Let me write a different one. One third power. What is a third root? What does a third root mean to do? Something with three. Something with three. Not, you're close. You're getting there. There you go. Put both your answers together. Perfect. So what three numbers multiply by themselves three times? What number three times? So it's the same number three times, right? What is that for this one? Two. So the third root would be two, because two times two times two makes eight, right? That's what third root is. Remember, we're looking for, for square root, we're looking for pairs. Third root, we're looking for three of a kind. Fourth root, four of a kind, right? What times itself that many times makes the number on the inside? What times itself three times makes the number on the inside? That's what the third root is. Just read, that's review from last semester. Okay? Okay, so let's go back. First step they want you to do is just convert it, change it. Convert means change. Doesn't mean do anything to it, it's just change it. So change those from roots and powers to one power, okay? So, power goes on top. So what power does this guy have? Two, right? Has two power. What is the root? Seven. So two sevenths power is the same thing as the seventh root of x squared. They're the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Nothing different. Okay? So 
Now let's do this guy. Letter B, 1B. What power does 1B have? That's the root. 4 is the root. 1, right? If it doesn't have a power, it's 1. So 1 goes on top. And then the root is 4. So the fourth root of x is the same thing as x to the one-fourth power. They're the same thing. Okay? But instead of writing a root, I write a power. Okay? So let's go the opposite way now. Here's the powers. Change it to a root. Okay? So it's going to need a root. Top is the power. It's two. Bottom is the root. Three. Done. Two B. You're going to see this one a lot. One half power. We've already seen it. One half power. One half power means x to the first square root. In other words, the square root of x. So anything, anytime you see one half power, it means square root. It's another way of saying square root. Okay? It's like, like we just said. 81 to the one half power means the square root of 81, which is 9, right? 64 to the one half power means the square root of 64, which is 8, right? It's the same thing. One half power, you're going to see a lot because it's very common. It just means square root. Okay? Okay, so let's go to the back now. The back now, we're simplifying. Inside, on the back, we're simplifying. We need to simplify all of these. Okay? That's all we're doing, simplifying. Well, to simplify, I have rules, right? We did these rules last Thursday. These are the seven rules. I'm not changing any of these rules. These rules are still there. Okay, we just have to figure out which rule to use. Okay, so for this guy here, 3a, which rule are we going to use for 3a? Which rule to simplify are we going to use to simplify this guy? Which one are we going to use? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. Number 2. Yep, I agree, right? It's a power to a power, right? Isn't it a power to a power? So when we have a power to a power, what do we do with the, what did we do last week to those powers? Multiply them, good, multiply them. So we're going to multiply the powers. X to the two-fifths times three halves. How do we multiply fractions? Close, straight across. Yeah, we don't do the butterfly. If there was an equal sign in between instead of multiply, we would do butterfly, but this one we just do straight across. So two times three is six. Two times five is 10. Reduce it if you can, always reduce your fractions. Can I reduce that fraction? Yeah, they both can be divided by 2, right? So my answer is x to the 3 fifths. So the question wants just A. What is the power got to be? What is the power? That's all they want, right? So the power is what I finished with, 3 fifths. That's the answer. Not x to the 3 fifths, just the power, because that's all they wanted. They just wanted the power. Okay. Letter B. Letter B. What do we do with the powers? Add them. Mm -hmm. We're going to add them. 
x to the 3 fifths plus 1 6th power. We had to add fractions, right? We did this last chapter, except the fractions that we added were like 30 times harder, right? These are just basic fractions. So when you're doing basic fractions, you need a common denominator, right? What's the common denominator for 5 and 6? Thirty. Thirty. So that means this guy needs to be multiplied by five and this guy needs to be multiplied by six. So you get eighteen over thirty. Zoom out because it's getting a little eighteen over thirty plus five over thirty. Once you have a common denominator, you add the top, leave the denominator the same you get 23. They just want the power. Twenty three over 30. That's the power. Okay. All right. Letter C. What are we going to do to these powers for letter C, 3C? Well, this one's got a fraction, right? 3C has a fraction. There's only two of them with a fraction. Only two rules with a fraction. There's rule 5 and there's rule 7, right? What's the difference between five and seven? Mm -hmm. Yeah, number seven has parentheses. Ours doesn't, right? Ours looks more like this, right? We have a base. I have a base. That's the same here and same here. So I'm going to subtract the powers, okay? Well, the bottom doesn't have a power. What power does the bottom have? One. So four thirds minus one whole. Well, what's another way of writing one whole so I can subtract these two? One over one, or it's gotta have a three on the bottom. Three over three. Subtract the tops, you get one over three. There you go. Power is one-third. Okay. Same rules. Like I said, I have not included any new rules. Any, I have not included any new rules. Okay. Last thing we got to do is now we're going to use the same rules, but remember parentheses, negative or zero, combine... Same combine if they're on the same level, if they're on different levels, um, subtract the exponents and the reduce. We're going to use those same rules. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is, um, is it doesn't have a parentheses, right? This guy does not have parentheses, 4a. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it. I'm going to change it from radical to a power. Okay, so let's go remind ourselves how to do that. The root goes at the bottom. Power goes at the top. Okay, so let's go back. This is a fraction. m to the negative 8 over m to the 4th. What power is that going to be? Nine negative four. So what's going to go on the bottom? 
What goes on the bottom? The root, right? The root goes on the bottom. So what is the root of ours? 36. There you go. 36 goes on the bottom. Good. 36 is going to go on the bottom. What goes on top? Before you answer, I already have negative 8 written, right? I already have positive 4 written. So it's not going to be any of those two guys. What power? If it doesn't have a power, what power do we write? One. It's going to be one. Because if there was something like this, that's the power I'm talking about. But there is nothing there, right? There is nothing there. So it's just one. Okay, so now no more root. We just have parentheses. So now let's go inside the parentheses. What do I need to do inside the parentheses? Negative, right? Negative exponent. Bring it down because it's on top and it's negative, so I need to bring it down. Good. So let's rewrite this. So I have m to the eighth times m to the fourth. What's on top? Nothing, right? If there's nothing there, what's always going to be there? A one. Good. Good. Okay. No more negatives, no more zero, no zero exponents. What's my next step? Are there any I can combine or sub add or subtract? Are there any? I got m down here and m down here, right? So what am I going to do with those powers? Add them or subtract them? Because they're on the same path. They're on the same level, right? Good. Do that. 1 over m to the 12th. Okay, so it gets a little tricky. I don't want to say tricky, but it gets a little bit different here. So now I'm right here, all right? Which one of these rules looks like that? Which one of these rules? Don't let the, don't let the fraction or the, the, the weird power 1 over 36 affect you. Which one does it look like? 7, right? It looks like 7. And what does 7 say? 7 says that... If I have a fraction to a power, both of them get the power, right? This guy gets a power, that guy gets a power, right? They both get powers. That's what's going to happen here. Oops. That's what's going to happen here. One is going to get a power, 1 over 36. M to the second power gets a power, or a 12 power, sorry, 1 over 36. Let me ask you a very, sounds like a hard question, but it's really an easy question. What is 1 to the 1 over 36 power? It's a hard question because it sounds hard. 1 over 36, what does that mean? But we know what it means, right? What power is 1 to? What power does 1 have? 1, right? What is 1 to the first power? 1. Okay. 36 on the bottom. What times itself 36 times? And the answer is 1. So a number times itself 36 times. is equal to 1. It sounds hard, but it really isn't that bad. The answer has to be 1, right? And I have to multiply the same number. One. There you go, right? 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, 36 times, right, is going to equal 1. So the top, as confusing as the top looks, the answer is just one whole. 
let me give you a little bit. This is not a rule, but it's just one to any power is just going to equal one. One to any power. It doesn't matter what power it is. Positive, negative, fraction, zero. One to any power is always going to equal one. So we like when we see we like when we see one to some power because the answer is just one. Okay, so now let's do the bottom. 12 and 1 over 36. What do I do with those guys? Multiply them, right? Multiply them. How do I multiply 12 times 1 over 36? What do I got to do? Put a 1 under 12 and then multiply straight across, right? 12 over 36. Can I reduce that fraction? Yep. 12 goes into both of them. 12 goes into 12 once. 12 goes into 36 three times. So our final answer is 1 on top, m to the 1 third on the bottom. That's as far as we can go because we can't use any more rules. I only have one M, so I can't combine or cancel out. The top is one, one third I can't reduce, I'm done. That's as far as we can go. Now I use the same, I used every single one of these guys. I use these guys, that's all I used, right? So I didn't use any new rules. The only little wrinkle today is that you're going to have fractions but you guys did fractions last chapter. And the fractions you see today are gonna be very, very easy compared to the ones. They're straightforward. They're not like one, plus, one over x plus three over x squared equals, you know, they're not crazy like that, okay? They're not algebraic. All right, so let's look at the next one. We're gonna do a couple more examples and then I'm gonna give you a couple problems to do on your own if we have time. You done? Yeah, I'll take it. You're not going to have time to finish. We'll just do it tomorrow. Okay. All right. Letter B. This one doesn't have a power. Does, or sorry, root, right? No roots like the last one did or letter C does, but it does have parentheses. So what's my first step going to be with my inside the parentheses? So before that, yeah, you're right. You're right, Emily, we're gonna do that. But before that, we need to, yeah, negatives, right? No, you're right, that'll be our next step. That's gonna be our next step. Move everything to the top, right? Move everything to the top. If I move everything to the top, what's on bottom? Nothing. So if there's no bottom, if it's a, if it's a one on the bottom, I don't need to write the bottom anymore. So, on, so only on top now, S to the fifth, and s to the third. Still in parentheses, still a 5 eighths, right? I still have parentheses. What can I do inside the parentheses? Combine them, right? So when I combine them, what am I going to do with the powers? Add them, good. Last step, what do I do with the powers? Multiply, yep. You're gonna get 40 over eight, which divides to make just five. S to the fifth, you're done. Okay. All right, let's do letter C. Okay, 
This one, again, this one does not have a parentheses, but it does have a root. Which root is it? What's the number of the root? Two, right? It's a two. They're not there. We don't have to write it, but I just write it just because it reminds me. So to get rid of that root, we're going to change it to parentheses. What power is it going to be? If I'm taking a square root, which power is it going to be? What's another power? What's a power for square root? Well, where does the root go? Top or bottom? What's the power? Doesn't have one, right? So what is the power going to be? One. One half. Square root means one half power. Okay, no more root. Okay. Now what do I do? I got to work inside the parentheses now. One guy has to move, right? This guy has to move down. So I get C to the first on bottom and C to the third on bottom. There's nothing left on top, so that means a one has to be there, right? Okay. The C's, what can I do with the C's? Combine them, right, by adding them. Okay. Now, what about the power? How do I, how do I deal with the power now on the outside? Give it to both. Good. One gets a one-half power. C to the fourth gets a one-half power. The top, we like to see this, the top. The top, one to any power, the answer is always going to be one. It doesn't matter what power it is, positive, negative, fraction, doesn't matter. It's one. The bottom, what power, what do we do with the exponents on the bottom? Multiply, and when we multiply, we get positive two. We're done. You are done, so far as we can go. Okay. All right, last two. Last two look very similar. Simplify them, but we have to simplify them in in radical form. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is change them to radical form. Change it to radical form. Okay, so that means it's going to have a radical. 24 is going to be here. What power does 24 get? One. All right? Don't need to write the one, but you can if you want. What root does the radical get? Two squared, right? You don't need to write the two squared. It's automatically assumed that if there is nothing there, it's two, but you can, doesn't hurt. So now we have to simplify it. Square root of 24, right? It's just this, all we're doing here is the square root of 24. Regular 24. Well, 24 is not on my list of square roots, right? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. So it doesn't have a square root of a nice clean number. So what do we do? Well, we're going to do what we did last semester. Does anyone remember what we did last semester to reduce, to, to simplify this guy? Not the formula. No, it's easier than that. Break down 24 and look for... There you go. Pairs, right? Break down 24 using the tree and look for pairs for this one. Okay, so we're going to break down 24. 
keep breaking it down until I get numbers that can't be broken down anymore. Okay, so you should get 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So let's go change it. Okay, looking for pairs, because it's square root, I'm looking for pairs. So I have a pair of twos. So since they're a pair of twos, I only take one two out. What's left? Three, three times two, which is six, right? Six doesn't have any pairs. So that means six has to stay on the inside. And you're done. That's what we did. That's just a review from last semester, what we did. Okay. Six doesn't have any pairs, so it's got to stay in. All right, here we go. Letter E now, same thing, letter E. Now we have 27. Now 27 is here. What power does 27 get? Five. Good. And then it gets a root of three, right? So that means I'm looking for triples. The root means how many of you look, how many of a kind are you looking for? Three of a kind this time, triples. Okay. All right. So to figure out triples, how many triples am I going to have? So 27, I don't have to break it down, but how many 27s do I have? It's to the fifth power, right? So I have five of them. I'm looking for triples. I got one triple. Right? I only have two 27s left on the inside. Those aren't triples. Those are two pairs. But 27 can still be broken down. 27 can still be broken down. So let's break down 27, because maybe I have triples hiding in the 27s. Okay, so 27, 9 times 3. Circle the 3. 9 times 9 is 3 times 3. So, yep. Turns out each of those 27s has three threes. Each of those 27s. So I have 27 in front. And then each of those guys has three threes. Making six threes total. Now I have more triples. What's left inside? Yeah, one, right? So, and what's the third root of one? Just one, right? So if there's nothing left on the inside besides one, you don't even need to write. The, the root anymore. So I don't even need to write the root anymore. So I'm going to write what I got. I got 27, and then I took out two triples. So that's where I write 3 times 3. 27 times 3 times 3. 243, I believe. You're done. No more root. I don't need the root anymore because there's nothing left on the inside besides 1. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to give you two more problems to do on your own. So wherever you're going to tape this in your notebook, I'm going to give you two more problems. The first one is a multiple choice one. The second one is not. So the first one is a multiple choice problem. We'll call this problem F. So which one does it simplify to? A, B, C, or D? Do the first. Do that one first. So here we go. This is what I got as an answer, right? 
So here we go. So we got, so I move the negative down, right? Inside the parentheses, I move the negative down. Combine these two guys, gave each of these guys a power, reduced the power, and I got this, right? But the problem is the answer's not up there, right? None of these answers match exactly, right? A doesn't have a fraction, D doesn't have a fraction, B and C have fractions, but those, the power doesn't match, right? So let's, let's cross out the ones that can't work. The ones that can't work are the ones without fractions. A doesn't have a fraction. D, there's no fraction. So those can't work, right? So we're left with B and C. Well, B is close, but instead of having a fourth power, it has a one-fourth power. That one-fourth is a quarter. Four is four. There's a difference between four dollars and a quarter, right? So does this one, could this one work? What does one-fourth power mean? The fourth squared and then to the first power, right? So yeah, that's it. C is the, the C is the correct answer. Their answer was just in a different form. It's in radical form as opposed to exponent form. This one's in exponent form. This one's in radical form. They're exactly the same though. Okay. All right, one more, we're done. One more, we're done. So I'm going to give you one with a number instead of W's and X's and Y's and A's and B's. I'm going to give you one with a number, 64 now. 64 to the one third power squared. Simplify that as far as you can. So the first thing is I got to use, for this guy, I have to use um, rule number two. I have a power to a power, right? So I need to multiply. Multiply the powers. So when I multiply one third times two over one, I get two thirds. No more parentheses. Okay. So now, since it's not A or B, it's actually 64, I got to change it. So the third root of 64 squared, which means there's two 64s. Right, there's two 64s. I'm looking for three of a kind. I don't have three of a kind right now, right? I only got two 64s. But I got to break down 64 to figure out if there's any triples in there. So I'm going to break down 64. 64 is 8 times 8. And then 4 times 2. Circle the 2. 2 times 2. Circle the 2s. And then the same thing over here. 4 times 2. 2 times 2. Okay, so 64, each of those 64s is actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 twos. Each of those 64 is 6 twos. So how many twos do I actually have in there? 12. So you can write 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times You can do that, or you can just do this. 2 to the 12th, because that's what it means, right? How many triples 
am I going to have if I have 2 times 2 total times? If I have 12 twos, how many triples am I going to have? Four. Or 12 over 3, right? Which is 4. Oops, not r to the fourth. I'm going to write r. 2 to the fourth. And what is 2 to the 4th? 16. You're done. Okay. And that's it. All right. Okay, tapes in the back. Tape in your notes. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see what I was going to say. We'll do some more practice tomorrow on this. Okay.